So, how do I get involved in cars? Just basically through family. My uncles had workshops, panel beaters, and um, spray painting, and, and a mechanical shop, and just grew up cars and yeah, just sort of in the blood, really. So basically, Nissans, mainly GDRs, RBs, some SR20 work as well, and, and a little bit of Subaru work, but essentially it's a GDR focused workshop. Today we're gonna to be putting Bono's uh, RB30 bottom end together. It's one of our OEM crank 1,000 horsepower packages. So I personally prefer RB30s over RB26s, RB28s, mainly because of block strength. The extra height that we get from the block makes the block a bit stiffer and um, helps with cracking and, and things like that. And plus, it's for the, for the money, it's relatively cheap. Um, not so much a stroke kit, but an increase in capacity. Yeah. yeah. Where, where do you get one of these? Oh, anywhere. Okay. Wrecking yard. Yeah. Um, people wrecking VLs, yeah. R31 Skylines. Yeah. So the head bolts on yeah. with the right gasket. The main, the main modification that we have to do on these is when you put the sump, an all-wheel drive sump on, we need an adapter plate, um, which we get from Platinum Racing Products, um, which is this one here. So that converts the pan rail where the sump bolts to um, from a two-wheel drive pan to a four-wheel drive pan. Okay, so this is Bono's RB30 bottom end that we're gonna put together now. Um, with his R34 GDR. So first thing we're gonna do is put the crankshaft in. Um, so we'll turn it over. Okay, so we've got ACL race bearings um, and ARP main studs. So first, we just put some assembly lube on the bearings. All right, so this is our 1,000 horsepower rated factory RB30 crankshaft. Um, we drill and grub screw oil galleries so the plugs don't come out with oil pressure and so we can clean the crankshaft properly. Um, on the front, we put a wide, what they call a long nose collar for the oil pump drive. It's all been balanced, polished, straightened, crack tested. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. There's not really much to it. It's pretty, pretty simple setup. The girdle. Now, put some ARP lube on our main studs. So we're just putting more, some more um, ARP thread lube on the, on the nuts for the main studs. It's a horrible job, messy and it's no real. So this is so that the the nuts don't bind up on the threads and the studs and, and everything torques up nicely so you get the correct torque reading or the correct torque setting when you when you tighten your your girdle down. So what that'll do is it'll make sure your bearing clearances are right because everything's tensioned to the same same torque setting and you get the correct clamp. So our washers. So now we're gonna snug up all the nuts before we, just to bring the cradle down, the girdle down, before we get our torque wrench and um, tighten everything properly. So we've got a procedure now where we have to 
tighten all these nuts in the right order. So we start from the center and work our way outwards. So now we're going to tension these. Just make sure our crankshaft turns nice and easy. Beautiful. We'll get our pistons, con rods. Some more assembly lube. Oil up the bores. You don't want to put anything together without any lubrication. We'll do one, number one and number six at the same time because they are both got the same position on the crankshaft in the stroke. So when, so when you're going, that goes up, mm. six and one and six, mm. and then the other. So, yeah, so when one's up the top, yep. six is up the top. Okay. When one's at the bottom, six is at the bottom. So that way, we'll turn the crankshaft all the way up yep. for one and six, put those two pistons in, yep. and then tighten them. Then we go and do the next two, and then the next two. So we get our piston, some more engine oil so i like to mark front and what number piston it is make sure our rings are around the right way so this is our ring compressor So we've got the crankshaft at bottom dead center for piston for cylinders one and six. Then we'll turn it over, put our rod caps on and torque the conrod bolts. All the pistons and rods are in. Um, we're gonna put the grub screws in the oil galleries, in the crankshaft. So we'll lock tight those, lock them up, and then keep going. Okay, so that's Bono's bottom end just about finished, minus the sump and a couple other bits and pieces which we have to pull off his car when 
we're ready to actually put the engine in the car. Um, this is the Platinum Racing Products block brace slash all drive sump adapter. Um, so we use these on all our engines, 450 kilowatts and, and above. Um, basically, braces the main caps, the, or the main girdle to the pan rail, stops, a bit, stops the block twisting, and then also allows you to bolt your all wheel drive GDR, stage GDR, uh, GDS4 sump to your RB30 block. So yeah, that's, that's it for now. And once we've got the head back, we'll finish her off. So I got um, the GDR maybe about four years ago. Um, it was uh, an import from Japan. I didn't import it myself, but um, it was at a dealership and it had been imported and no one wanted to buy the car. And that was when the GDR prices were slowly going up. So I thought to myself that if I don't get it now, I'm never gonna get it. So that's when I bought it. So approximately about four years ago. Uh, through friends, a lot of social media especially, um, seeing the builds, um, on Instagram posts, social media posts and stuff like that. Especially specializing in the RB30 is what I'm really interested in. So that's why um, I hit up Dartone. Um, so Anthony offers the 1000 horsepower crank to his customers and I just feel like GDRs these days, if it makes 500 kilowatts, you know, that's just another average GDR. I wanted to just go a little bit extra, but not too over the top. And also want to learn how to drive the car as well. I think a thousand horsepower is a good starting point, but we'll see how we go from there. But that's why I really wanted this build. Um, and the 30, of course, a bit more displacement and whatnot. You have more response. So my approach was always to have response for the street. Um, and that's really it, yeah.